Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be going over yesterday's combat update. This video will be very in-depth, even more so than my previous guides. So apologies if I go over something too quick, but feel free to go back and re-listen just to make sure you understand it all. So this update yesterday made it that your skills now have a much greater effect on your combat effectiveness than they did before. For example, previously, your weapon's accuracy made up almost all of the variable for working out hit chance, disregarding your opponent's defence that is. However now, the higher your level is, the more base accuracy you will have for that combat style. I have been collecting data on these new base values that you have at a number of levels, as you can see here. These values are on an exponential, so if you were to extrapolate the curve up to level 116, that's the max you'll get with extremes or overloads, you'll find yourself with a base accuracy bonus of 1752. Now as I said before, the accuracy a weapon gives is now only part of the equation, as you can see in this column. If you add your base accuracy at the level required to wield a certain weapon, its accuracy increases by quite a large amount. It's also worth noting that with 99 attack, even the low-level weapons have a dramatically increased total accuracy. Now you may be thinking, by looking at this last column here, that Drygores have been heavily nerfed, along with other high-level equipment. But this is in fact not the case, as the entire equation for calculating hit chance has changed, as have the way armor values have, which are the key variable needed from your target to work out how likely you are to hit them. So with all of this attack data, I visualized it into a graph showing the difference between a weapon's base accuracy and the addition of your attack level onto that curve. And as you can see, the higher level your attack, or ranged or magic if using one of those combat styles, the further the gap is away from the weapon's accuracy. This just proves now that the higher the level you have, the more beneficial it'll be for you. So accuracy helps you hit your target. That much is obvious. But what about the gear that you're wearing? If you're using melee, but are wearing dragonhide, say, how much is the negative accuracy modifier on you? Well, let me show you this visual example now. Here I am, wearing level 70 melee gear, and you can see that I have a chance to hit of 51% against ranged. When I equip this armadillo chestplate, you'll see that this 51 becomes 43. I'll now equip a hard leather body, also ranged gear, but at a much lower tier. What do you notice? I have the same accuracy drop. This is because no matter what tier you wield, as long as it isn't correspondent to your attack style, it'll lower your hit chance. You'll also notice that I'm wearing Gliven boots. Now, these are in fact ranged boots, but boots aren't taken into consideration for hit chance. Only chest plates, legs, and shields matter here. The percentage that you'll lose by wearing an incorrect armor piece is 15% of your current hit chance per piece. So when I have 51 accuracy, if you multiply this by 0.85 and then round the value, you'll get the 43. So as you can see, making sure you have the right gear when fighting also benefits your chance to hit and overall accuracy. So moving on to armor then. Yesterday's update also included an overhaul of the armor types, splitting it into three categories. Tank, power and hybrid. As you can guess, tank armor is designed to make you durable, providing you with full armor rating and full life point boosts. Power armor sacrifices these for extra damage equal to roughly 10% extra damage of a one-handed weapon of that tier. For example, at level 70, a one-handed weapon with fastest attack speed would be a whip. This has a base damage of 672. Now, when you use the full Bandos set, the bonus damage that you're getting is 64, which is roughly 10% of the whip's damage. The trade-off with this armor, though, is that you're getting much less defensive bonuses, but for safer activities such as Slayer, this armor is definitely the one to choose. Finally, there's Hybrid Armor. This armor has the lowest defensive stats of all the types, and doesn't provide any bonus attack. However, and this is a big however, you're not limited by class types for your gear. This means that you can wear it in any situation, and you won't lose out on your chance to hit, unlike with the Torag Armadil example I showed you earlier. So tank armor gives 100% of the armor rating you'd expect from that tier. Power armor gives an armor rating equal to that of tank armor from 5 levels below. So for example, Armadil, level 70, has the same armor rating as Royal Dragonhide, which is level 65. Finally, for hybrid armor, the armor rating you have is equal to that of tank armor 15 levels below. So, the obsidian armor at level 80 has the same armor rating of royal dehyde at level 65. Life point boost is slightly different, with tank armor again giving 100%, but this time power armor gives 10 tiers below in life points, rather than the 5 it lost for armor rating. So, for example, armadil armor has the same life point boost as black dragonhide armor, which is level 60. Hybrid armor is the same as it was for armor rating, and so the life point boost given by hybrid armor is equal to that of tank armor from 15 levels below, so obsidian armor has the same life point boost as royal dehyde. 
It's also worth mentioning that the total armor rating you see on your equipment screen also receives bonuses from your defense level, at the same rate that attack gives bonus accuracy. This means that with 99 defense, you're getting an extra 1212 armor rating, on top of what your armor is already giving you. Finally, life point boost is also given a boost by a base amount of life points, based on your constitution skill. This amount ranges from 400 life, at level 10, to 3960 at 99. This is equal to 40 times your current constitution level. Alright then, that's all the data I've gathered so far for this latest update. I hope I was able to explain it to you all nice and clearly, and that you now understand what to use when fighting, and how accuracy, armor ratings, and finally life point boost are calculated and affected by the gear you're using. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.